Con Air, Hollywood versus reality. Welcome to Con Air. Coming up. Hey, 7-4 crew, welcome back. If you don't know me, my name's Kelsey. I'm a 747 pilot. My channel, 7-4 Gear, is all about aviation. Today, this is the view from my hotel room. You can leave me a comment, let me know where you think I'm at, and later on in the video, I'll tell you exactly where I'm at. Con Air came out in the 1990s. It's a movie about some cons that take over an aircraft and then end up crashing it. And if you haven't seen the movie and you want to watch the whole thing, I'll put a link in the description that you can go check it out. Until then, let's get into it. Got a fire. Where is it? She's reporting it in the rear cabin. Get the gun out of the lockbox, Mac. Go on back there, check it out. Oh my god. Say there was a disturbance, but everything's under control. Say it, or I will kill you. So this emergency switch is just as for all general emergencies or something in specific, like the passengers have taken over the aircraft. There is no such thing as an emergency switch on an aircraft. We have a code that we put in as transponder, which lets air traffic control know that we have an emergency, but there is no switch that you flip which throws on flashing lights like that. Now there are pilots that do have guns and there are planes where there are pilots with weapons on board and I'm not going to get into the specifics and this was obviously pre 9-11. I'm not going to get into the specifics of exactly what we do and what we don't do in a scenario but one of the things that you would never see is a pilot run out of the flight deck with a gun in their hand for this exact reason here. The other thing that I'm hoping a pilot would never do is in a hand-to-hand -hand combat situation, uh, squeeze the face of the bad guy because that's not really going to do you any good if he's going to shoot you with a gun. Now I've mentioned this in the past, but pilots, we don't wear our shoulder harnesses when we're flying. We wear them for takeoff and landing, and after takeoff, we take them off because it's not very comfortable, it's hard to reach things on the flight deck. So the fact that they're in cruise, they wouldn't have them on. Even in turbulence, I've had people ask, well, what about in turbulence would you have them on? No, because you have a seat belt, just like all the passengers, and that prevents you from getting your head thrown into the overhead panel, which I've seen happen, it hurts, so make sure you wear your safety belt. So that was just a few of the Hollywood things that I noticed in this first scene, but let's get back to the movie. In this scene, the convicts have taken over the plane, kicked the pilot out, and kicked out all the guards. Here we go. Swamp thing? That's right. Flying a plane? That's right. doing here hello i forgot dave Chappelle was in this movie and he's so funny all right so the plane that they're flying is a c-123 now something that is not very accurate and i've never flown this type of plane but something that's not very accurate is you're not going to access the captain's seat which is the left hand seat from going around the outside of the chair I think they did the same thing in Air Force One in the Hollywood versus reality. I think I talked about that. You're never going to access any flight deck. Well, any flight deck that I've been on, you're not going to access a seat from the outside. You're going to go over what may be the center pedestal and it may not look right. So an actor would think, well, I'll go around the outside. And again, it's probably a movie set. So there's going to be space around the outside. But in real life, you're going to go over the center pedestal to get into the seat. Something else that's very Hollywood, I'm not sure how he used his fingers to take out the transponder, which is massive, by the way, but I'm not sure how he used his fingers to do it. I've never been in jail, 
but I can't imagine his finger strength would be strong enough to unscrew something out of the center pedestal, but let's just imagine that it was. That thing that he took out was the transponder. The transponder is something that we use to communicate with air traffic control. Uh, we put a code in there, that code lets them know what plane that we are, and then we're also able to put in specific codes in case we have an emergency or something like that on board. I talked about that emergency switch, that's not how you would do it, you'd use the transponder as a thing which he's taking out. That transponder is also one of the ways that air traffic control uses planes for separation. A while back I'd posted something on Instagram with a plane flying right over the top of us. And someone said, ooh, aren't you scared when something like that happens? And I'm not, because air traffic control knows that we're there, they can see where the other plane and their altitude is at, and that transponder is also talking to something in our plane to let us know that they're above us and we can see where they're at. So that transponder has a lot of different roles. Is it realistic to take that out of the plane and put it on another plane? Yeah. Is it realistic to do it with your fingers? Probably not. The last thing that kind of caught my attention here is how well these convicts know the aircraft. If you saw the Hollywood versus reality did on executive decision, you remember about that emergency hatch where the guys access the aircraft. Now, if you hadn't watched that video, you wouldn't have known about that emergency hatch. However, in this movie, you see Dave Chappelle climbing out of this hatch at the bottom of the plane. Now, I don't know how all of these guys know the schematics of this aircraft, so that makes no sense. All right, those are just a few of the things that jumped out as very Hollywood in this scene. Let's get back to Con Air. Sound like a damn plane. Gilbert One, you are not cleared for takeoff. Ain't nobody on this aircraft gives a flying. <laughs> hey! Hey, go speak with me! Bimbo! I'm sorry! Hey! Man, the wind is howling outside my hotel room, so if you hear a bunch of noise, that's what it is. So the first thing that's very Hollywood here is that the fueler is sitting there on the plane, even though they've turned on both engines are getting ready to pull away. So is it possible for a plane to start the engines and pull away with a fuel truck attached to it? Yeah, that's possible. But if you were a fueler, you would either disconnect the hose from the plane or walk away or something. You wouldn't just be sitting there while they turn on both engines and then be surprised when they pull away. By the way, quick shout out to all the Underwing guys who watch this channel. I've had a few of you say hi to me in the last couple weeks. I really appreciate you all being here and coming to say hi. Thank you so much. The next thing that's very Hollywood is you hear Tower make an announcement over what appears to be like a loudspeaker at the airport. That's not something you would have. That happens sometimes at air shows, but you wouldn't have that if you were having a bunch of convicts coming in. You wouldn't be broadcasting that on loud radio. Gilbert One, you are not cleared for takeoff. You would be transmitting that to a normal headset or over a normal frequency that the pilots would be listening to, and you could see he had his headset on. So it'd be going in there if they wanted to talk, but obviously their convicts are not going to be listening to air traffic control. Now, is it possible for someone to show up and turn on a plane that they've never flown before? Not very realistic, but if this guy is a trained pilot, and I don't know if he is or if he's not, if he's a trained pilot and he's flown this plane, then yes, it's very possible. I've never flown a C-123. I could probably get in and figure out how to start it and figure out how to take off and land. I could probably figure it out. I've never looked at the flight deck of one, but I could probably figure it out. But if you're not a trained pilot in any way, you're never going to be able to show up and jump up there and get all these things to happen that fast. It takes a while to start some engines. So the fact that they're in there and able to start up everything super fast or the way that that's how they're showing that it is that this fueler's caught off guard, that's not very realistic. And then finally, for all the prisoners that are in the back that are super happy and they're jumping up and down, I guess they know this person is a pilot because otherwise, why would they be so excited that somebody who's untrained has now taken them up in the air in this aircraft? I would think it'd be better to be in prison than burn in a fiery death when he crashes the plane. All right, let's go back to Con Air. Don't they have a way of tracking these planes? Oh yeah, it's called a transponder. Every plane's got one, Sandino. Swamp, where is the transponder? <laughs> <gasps> where indeed? <laughs> <laughs> They're headed southeast toward Arizona.
Cyrus Grissom, do you copy? Cyrus Grissom, do you copy? Yes, I copy. Identify yourself. There is a frequency that all pilots are usually listening to at all times. It's 121.5. It's a frequency called GARD. And you are able to reach pilots if you're not sure which frequency they're on. You can transmit to that and most pilots would be listening. So it is possible that they broadcast on that frequency and that the bad guys happen to be listening to that frequency. However, they think the plane is in a different location than it's actually at. They think the plane is on that red plane, not on the Con Air plane. It's very Hollywood that they're transmitting and then reaching that aircraft. They think it's in a different location, which means if they were talking on a frequency in that location, it wouldn't be showing up or being heard by these pilots. So that's very Hollywood. Another thing that you'll notice is that the room where air traffic control is operating usually does not look like that. I've seen a few, and a shout out to all the air traffic controllers who watch the channel. I had a guy a few months back recognize my voice, which I thought was crazy. But usually the rooms where the guys are controlling planes over large air spaces like that are usually in dimly lit rooms. And the reason is, is because they're working with computers all the time. This is obviously a very bright open room with fans and everything going on. That's usually not, at least from my experience, that is not how those rooms look. They're usually dimly lit because there's a lot of computers in there and they don't want a lot of glare. All right, let's get back to Con Air. What's the ETA swamp thing? At 228 miles an hour, about 71 minutes. The only problem is we're not doing 228 miles an hour, we're doing 205, we're dragging, baby. The landing gear ain't all the way up. We're gonna be late. No, 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 Cyrus, that's unacceptable. Check out the gear. Tell I know about landing gear. Learn. Pull! Yeah? Cyrus wants you to check out the landing gear. So I said earlier, I hope this guy was a pilot and he's doing a lot of mental math, which if you're flying this type of aircraft, you're gonna be very good at mental math. As you get into bigger plane with more sophisticated systems, like let's say a Boeing 747, the computer is calculating a lot of things for you that you had to do in your head. So is it possible that his mental math is that good? Absolutely. However, if you have your wheels out or you have your landing gear out like that, it's gonna create some drag. On this type of aircraft, it wouldn't have such a significant impact. What it would do is actually decrease your fuel efficiency. If you had the gear out, you can still fly fast. It wouldn't necessarily exceed a limitation, but what you would have happening is that gear being out like that would create a lot of drag and that would slow the plane down unless you added more power, then you would just be burning more fuel and going the same speed. What would be more realistic is if they talked about the fuel being burning faster than they expected or the plane was less efficient than they expected because you can still maintain a speed with your gear out, you're just gonna be burning gas a lot faster. But the most Hollywood thing from this scene here is the fact of how well the criminals know the system of this aircraft. Usually you're not gonna have a bunch of different ways to move around and different places and passageways on an aircraft like that. It's not very common, but you're not gonna have someone who's never been on a plane before like this know that there's a light switch and there's usually not gonna be a light switch like that, but you're not gonna have people who've never been on a plane just jump down and go, oh, I'll just hit the switch. It's not like walking into a hotel room. And if you saw that memes that I did Sometimes even the hotel room lights are hard to work, but you're not gonna be able to just jump in and hit the switches like that. It takes a while to get comfortable inside an aircraft, so that is very Hollywood. All right, let's get back to the movie. Lerner Tower, do you copy? Lerner Tower, are you there, Phil? to be a remote airport in the middle of nowhere yet they have a control tower and a controller no that's not how it's going to be 
when you go to a remote airport and it's something that I did a lot in flight school and if you go through flight school you will do this you'll fly to a place that's uncontrolled now when I was doing that I would always say I don't need to learn this stuff because I'm gonna go fly big planes little did I know I'd end up on a 747 but even today on a 747 and on the Dreamlifter I've flown into places where the tower is closed and you have to make a transmission on the frequency that these little uncontrolled airports have so it's weird sometimes when you learn things in flight school you think I'm never going to use this and then you end up using it because you're flying a 747 into an uncontrolled airport which I never thought would ever happen. Okay now let's talk about this guy's plane full of the junk food that's sitting on his dash. One I've never seen a plane where anybody has their plane in that much disorder but it is possible. The one thing I noted is how good of a pilot this person is and how do I know that they're a great pilot is their landing was so smooth that all the trash that they had sitting on there it never moved so that was very impressive the other thing that caught my eye is that they're using the yoke to steer the plane like a car that's not how it works when you're on the ground you're going to use your feet or a tiller to steer the aircraft you're not going to use the yoke to steer the aircraft that's not how it works you steer the aircraft in the air like that but not on the ground the other very Hollywood thing here is bouncing his aircraft over the other aircraft is that possible yeah absolutely and you can bounce an aircraft believe me I know I have done it before but you're not generally going to bounce your aircraft over another aircraft to come in and land you what you would do is you would just do a go around go up and come back around and land again you also wouldn't be buzzing the tower that makes no sense at all why you would do that you would just come in and land on the runway all right let's get back to this landing scene So he's on the runway he hops over the Cessna so that's obviously going to increase your landing distance I get that but I'm not sure how he got so far off the runway that he's now hitting over lamp posts and going at a propane tank you would normally just keep landing straight and if you ran off the end of the runway I've never seen in all of my years at the end of any runway a large propane tank so that makes no sense you also can't force your landing gear up like that there's something called a squat switch which I'm not going to get into all the technicalities of it but it basically prevents you from bringing your landing gear up while you're on the ground for the exact reason of damaging your aircraft because someone accidentally were to move a lever you can imagine if you were to do that to a plane on the ground it would be a real problem and again you see him steering his plane with his yoke that's not how it works all right let's get back to the movie Right, nothing to do with aviation I just found it was kind of funny that one prisoner is whipping the other prisoners instead of helping pull the plane out of the dirt a turbine engine cannot be started very quickly it takes a while for it to spin up and all the components of what runs into starting up a turbine engine so if he unless he was sitting there with the engines running it doesn't make sense that he just jumps in and then throws full power to it that's not how that would work the other thing is it takes a while for an engine like that to spin up so when John loads up the back of it you're not going to see a face full of engine and then the back of the engine doesn't look like the afterburner on a fighter jet 
The back of that engine looks like the back of a normal engine, it's just a lot hotter. It's not gonna have a huge flame coming out the back of it. If you were behind that engine and they accelerated full power like that, would it blow you back? Yeah, it would blow you back. Would it leave a big black circle on your chest? No, it would not do that. So that's very Hollywood as well. The other very Hollywood thing is, is that you see John running and outrunning this jet. Now John might be very fast and he's able to do hurdles and all these other things and you saw Dave Chappelle running next to the plane earlier in the movie so I don't know if these are like the slowest planes in the world but you're just not going to have people running faster than planes. That's just not how it works unless maybe you're Usain Bolt. Anyway, you're not going to have him jump over the hurdle and outrun the plane and then jump onto a crane and drop the crane on the back of the plane. Is that possible that a crane could break off the back of a plane? Yeah, that's possible. But the other thing, and like I've mentioned in a lot of these other Hollywood versus realities, there are wires that run to the back of the plane. And those wires are used to control some of the control elements in the back of the plane, like the elevators and the rudder. So it makes no sense that they rip off the back of the plane and there's nothing attaching it. Like, what is the purpose of it back there? How do those things even move if there are no wires there? I have talked about these wires on these planes and I'm sure one of these days there will be a wing that will come off and fuel and wires will be there and I will be so happy. And I'll talk about it in a video. So if you're making a movie and there's something to do with wings coming off, talk about it and then send me a DM on my Instagram and I will be sure to talk about it in a Hollywood versus reality and thank you for putting it in there. All right, let's get back to Con Air. All right, let me pause this real quick because I've been asked about this several times. Could a plane haul a car up in the air like this? Yes, if it has the payload capacity, it could pull a plane up in the air. It wouldn't be flying around in the back like a kite like that, but it could haul it up in the air. And I talked about this on a few other movies. There's no reason to make a weird face when you're flying your plane. It's not going to make the plane landing any smoother. It's not going to let the plane do something it can't aerodynamically achieve. But some reason, it seems in these Hollywood movies, these people make these faces. And these faces aren't going to change what your plane is going to do. The only time you make a weird face is after you have a really terrible landing and the other pilot looks at you and you're hoping that makes them laugh. Don't ask me how I know that. <laughs> All right, let's get back to the movie. All right, Poe, the Las Vegas airport. It's just past the strip. Can you see it? Well, people, Las Vegas. It's right there, man. You can make it. All the runways are cleared. Come on, do it, Poe. Don't put this thing down. Well, listen here, Big Daddy. We got one engine shot to shit, zero fuel, and we're dropping too fast. The strip's where I'm going to land. Only the word is... Crash. Can you make it to the airport? No way, sir. I had to pause right here real quick because some of you may not know, I did some of my flight training actually in Las Vegas. And now the strip is right next to the airport. So if they can make it to the strip, they can make it to the airport. And so that makes no sense why they would pick the strip except for, of course, Hollywood. The other thing, if you are a student pilot, something that I learned as a student pilot is if you're going to crash at night, which it's very quickly approaching night here, you're gonna to wanna to land in a dimly lit area, not on a very bright area like this. The reason being is that if you were to crash in a dimly lit area, you're more likely to hit empty land not a house or a bunch of neighborhoods where there's gonna be telephone poles and electrical lines and things like that. Now you crash on an empty field, you have a much better chance than if you hit a home or a bunch of cars. So going to the strip makes no sense at all. But of course, landing on the strip is definitely more exciting than crashing in an empty field, which I guess explains why I'm not a movie director. All right, let's get back to the movie. Oh, and before I forget, if you haven't figured out where I'm at, because I've filmed here a lot, I'm in Incheon, South Korea. So I'm in Incheon, South Korea. I had a two day layover here, so it worked out perfect. I got to get a good night's sleep last night and that gave me energy to film this video. All right, now let's get back to the video.
I think I've beaten this dead horse enough, but in order to have an explosion, the wing has to have gas. There is gas that's in the wings. Talked about that a lot. They're saying they have no gas, yet when the wing comes off, there's a massive explosion and no wires. Magic. The next thing that's very Hollywood is the amount of momentum this aircraft is carrying. It's not a very heavy aircraft, yet it's blowing through a bunch of things and it's not stopping. You would think that the person flying the plane would have their feet smashed on the brakes to try to stop. I don't know what they're doing, but anyways, you would not be going through all of these things. It's just there's not enough momentum to carry it through. I've never flown through a bunch of things to try to slow my plane down, but it just basic physics that would not work. As for the guy saying he's going to leave the flight deck. I'm out of here! There's nowhere for him to go. You're crashing, you're on the ground, there is no ejection seat on the C-123. You might as well just stay strapped in and with your shoulder harnesses. Makes no sense to get up. So that makes no sense at all. And I don't know where he thinks he would be going that would be safer. Something else very Hollywood in this scene is that it looks like the propeller breaks off and then boomerangs over and then back into the plane. The propeller can break off and it can lodge itself in the plane, but it's not going to boomerang out and then back into the plane, then cut through the plane, and then go through the other side of the plane. It has nothing turning it, so the momentum would die as soon as it ripped into the plane. Another Hollywood vs. Reality video that I did that had criminals and aviation was American Made. If you haven't seen the Hollywood vs. Reality that I did on American Made, I'll put a link to it right here. I look forward to hearing from you. Until then... Keep the blue side up.